Okay, the project for today is uh, I'm going to put a new timing belt and water pump on my 97A4 Quattro. It's got the 2.8 V6. So I'm going to lift this car up off the ground, get the nose up in the air because we've got to remove the bumper and basically the whole front of the car to gain access to the front of the motor to replace that timing belt and water pump. So here we go. Okay, so the whole front of this car has to come off so we gain access to the engine because there's no there's no workspace in here. So I'll start with the headlights. Got a T30 Torx bit. You know, I want to pop off the corners of this thing. If I push down and out, this should come off. Like that. Do that on both sides. These two grills got to come out. Just pull them out firmly. They should come out. If you can get a grip on them. One. Okay, the next step is there are two 6mm Allen bolts uh, where are we? right there. One there. This is why we had to take that grill out. And another one on the other side in that grill window that we removed. So there we go. And those are long. Those are like 5 inches long. So those come out next. Okay, there's that, and another one on the other side. Okay, now this should be ready to come off. It's got some washer, water washer hoses hooked up to each side of these. They gotta come off. And there we go. Okay, now the next thing I need to take off are these two bumper posts. And they come off one, two, three bolts. So those three, there's three on this side. And then there's three on this side too. One, two, three. So the three posts here. And then this fastener right here. And these two up here. So two, three, four, five, six on each side. Okay, T30. On both sides and then a T45 for these one two three we'll leave that in there a little bit so now I'm going to take these two bolts that I pulled out from underneath to get the bumper off. They're long. I'm going to thread them in to this hole to the, where I just pulled this out. And I'll take this last one out. Just didn't want the whole thing to fall down. Okay, now I should be able to pull this whole carrier forward and it will just be hanging on these bolts here. No, oh, I got one more. Now I should be able to pull this carrier out a little bit. And this gives me room now to work to disconnect things like the radiator and all kinds of wiring harnesses. 
Okay, the next few things to remove are this radiator hose. It has to come off because it's connected to the radiator that's in the housing here. And this duct work for the alternator. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a an air duct that cools the alternator. So I just that just kind of slid off. And over here on this side, I'm going to need to disconnect some of these connectors because these harnesses for the fan are all going to come off and also this upper radiator hose. So lower radiator hose on the passenger side, upper radiator hose on the driver side, a uh, bunch of connectors. And then we'll see what's connected after that. And one other wire that goes to the hood open switch. It's just two wire terminal like that. Also the hood latch cable I need to disconnect. And on this side, before I disconnect the radiator hose and make a mess, I've got these two horn connectors. That harness stays in the car. And the horns come with us. Alright, so the next thing I want to take out individually is this condenser here for the air conditioner. I don't want to have to open up the air conditioning and evacuate it and do all that stuff. And it's not necessary. There's flexible hoses here. So I'm going to remove this condenser and try to swing it to the side and set it off and then the rest of this whole thing with radiator hoses will come off. Take these air shrouds off. Single Phillips screw. Okay 10 millimeter bolts will take off I believe you pull this out and up. Alright, so it's gonna go out and up, and then I have to get something to place it on over here. So let me find something to place this on before I lift it off. You want to be careful with this, it's pressurized. You know, whatever you can rig up so that it doesn't get damaged and it's out of your way, that looks pretty good to me. So I'll keep that like that. Okay, now I'm going to drain the radiator through this little drain plug here. Okay, now I'm going to disconnect the upper and lower radiator hoses. And those are pretty simple. You can see that we've got this clip here. And if I raise it up like that, now I can just pull that radiator hose off gently and it will slide off. Okay, so <clears throat> I got both radiator hoses off. Now the last thing I need to disconnect from this carrier is this. Here's the exterior temperature sensor. And this is the power steering pipe that's rooted in here to, it's kind of a, a cool pipe cooler. So there it is, that just runs up front there to cool off any power steering fluid and the exterior temperature sensor. Okay, this is ready to come out now. We just have to remove these long bolts that we put in earlier.
Okay. Now we get to see where we're going to be doing all of our work. We've got good access to everything now. Okay, now I'm going to take off some covers. Okay, I think the next thing I want to do is take off the serpentine belt here. You might want to make note of how it goes. Okay, next thing I want to get off are these covers. Well, this is in the way. Get rid of this thing. That is a, what size is this? 10 millimeter. Now I'm going to pop these covers off. Okay, the next thing I want to take off is this pulley here. These are six millimeter Allen's. And then just to make it interesting, there's a third one. There's a third one that you reach through here. However you can get to it, that's what I do. And then when you thought you had it all done, there is a 5 millimeter right here. And then once you get that fourth one off, then this pulley comes off. Okay, this is the absolute critical part of this job. I need to get this belt off and a new belt on without disrupting the relationship of the crankshaft with the camshafts. And so right now I've got the engine in the correct position. I've got the crank. Timing marks lined up, so it's top dead center. And I've got the camshafts on a horizontal plane with the large holes towards the center. You can see those two holes, one's larger than the other. So this large hole is to the inside. This one over here, it is perfectly horizontal. And the large holes to the inside, so I know I've got the engine in the correct position. So. When I take this belt off and I put the new belt on, I have to make sure that this timing mark stays perfect and that these two, this and this, are perfectly horizontal. And they're not going to move very easily. And i tell you the truth, if you're off a tooth, I mean this thing is going to be cocked like that or it's going to be like this. It, I think it'll be pretty obvious if you jump a tooth on one of these. But this is how it must be when I put it back together. Horizontal camshafts, crank lined up. And so I've put a couple of marks here just to help me. A couple of reference marks here, here. Here, here, but I'm more or less going to be looking at this shape 
and that shape to make sure they're perfectly horizontal and they're not tipped like that. They're perfectly straight and the crank is in its position. And if I can do that, and we're all set. If I get that wrong, I could be blowing the engine. Broken valves and you know damaged pistons. Nobody wants to do that. So, as long as I understand it, and I get it back together right, I'll be fine. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is to take off this harmonic balancer so we can access and get the belt off of the crank. And these are 6 millimeter Allen heads. I would recommend that you clean out these Allen heads to get this wrench seated deeply in there so you don't strip anything. I'm going to go gentle. Okay, and this is indexed, so you really can't, you know, don't worry about now the mark not lining up here because this can only go on in one position. Okay, and this cover also only goes on one way. There's two, two bolts you won't be able to misalign it at all. Okay, so now we finally get a complete look at the full timing belt. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to take off is this tensioner pulley. This is bolted off-center so you can swing this pulley to apply tension on the belt. And so now you can kind of see how you apply tension. And there we go. Okay, now I should be able to remove this entire belt. And there we go. Okay, the next thing I want to take off is the thermostat housing and the water pump. And some of the fasteners are hidden behind this pulley, so I got to get this pulley off. This is six mil. Okay, next is a thermostat housing. Use hand tools here. I don't want to strip or break any of these fasteners. Okay. both the same size and the thermostat and the next thing is now the water pump itself which is this whole aluminum part oh like that just broke that nut that bolt. Alright, so we broke two of them. I'm going to have to try to figure out how to deal with that. Got some stud to work with there. That's good. Let me show you what those broken bolts look like. Okay, so there's the water pump housing, the thermostat housing, and these are the two bolts that broke off. So I gotta get those out of there somehow without damaging any of the threads. 
so that a new fastener can go in there because these fasteners are absolutely critical for not having a coolant leak. All those bolts all have to be torqued down to a specific torque spec. So I got to get those out somehow. Okay, so here I go. I'm going to apply some heat to this stud. Clean it up, see if we can get it ready to try to unscrew it out of here. I can see it kind of turning blue there on the outside, on the end of it. But I'm going to try to heat it up a couple times. I forget what the torque setting is, but it, it isn't very tight. All right, I'm going to heat it up again. And I'm also going to hit it with a little penetrating oil. And let that seep in a little bit. And a little more heat. And a little more penetrant. Alright, here we go, a little more heat. Alright, cross your fingers. I'm going to grab this with my finger, but it's still pretty hot. And there we go. Okay, so I carefully and gently scrape down this surface with a gasket scraper. Try not to gouge or make any marks. And now I'm going to go around it with a brown cookie wheel to clean up the surface so it's nice and clean. So I put a gasket up against it and my new water pump and I won't have any leaks. Okay, I'm happy with all these surfaces. The thermostat has an O-ring. So it doesn't necessarily, there's no gasket really on this outside surface of this opening. There's an O-ring that slips in here. So I'm going to just take a wire brush and clean this whole inside channel. So the O-ring's got a nice smooth surface to press against. Okay, that looks good. Now we're getting to the fun part. We're going to bolt on all of our new goodies. Uh, here's the water pump housing. We got all that surface nice and cleaned up. Thermostat housing, all nice and clean. And we're going to start bolting on our new parts. So here we go. Okay, here we go. First thing I'm going to do is put on the water pump. It's got one paper gasket. I'm not going to put any sealer or anything, no silicone or no nothing. Just a dry gasket is all you need. And I broke a couple of bolts taking the old one out. And I went out and got nine brand new stainless steel fasteners. And that's what I will be using. All nine of them are brand new. 
And so now it's very important to torque this thing down. This has got water in there. It's a water seal. It's got a gasket. It's kind of a wide area. And you don't want to just go down here and just tighten them down like you're just tightening up anything. So I'm going to get them all kind of snug. And I'm going to go around this thing two or three times. I mean, you don't want a leak here. You get this car all back together again, you start it up, and this thing starts leaking coolant. You know, it's not going to be fun. So, get everything snug. And we're going to, I'm going to torque them down to 10 Newton meters, but I don't want to just go here and torque this to 10 and then go around. So I'm going to get them all kind of snug before I start torquing them down. I want this whole thing to be sock down evenly so I'm just gonna go far below the 10 newton meters just to get them snug and then I'll go with a torque wrench for the final torque so these are all brand new stainless steel fasteners and a brand new housing with a brand new gasket nice cleaned up surfaces so this should be no problem at all now they get a torque wrench and we'll torque them to spec okay now I'm going to go around a few times with the torque wrench not necessarily fully torque it the first time around but Okay, there it is. There's a tendency to want to crank it, want to try to crank it, but you don't want to. You don't want to over tighten it. You don't want to distort this thing. You want it to be nice and flush and flat. And I think we're good here. Okay, we're good. So that's on there. Step one. Okay, the next thing I'm putting on is the thermostat housing. So I've taken some time to clean this whole area up nicely, make sure there's no scale or anything left behind. I got my new thermostat. Uh, I want to make sure that everything fits nicely. There's no you know, nothing's out of place or out of position. It fits in nice. It's not binding up. Because if it's going to leak somewhere, it's probably going to leak in this area as one of the primary spots. And believe me, you don't want to start this thing up after all this work and have it leak in here. Because that's what you got to get back to to get it off. So just a little bit of time to make sure it's all nice and clean. And everything here looks perfect. So I'm ready to bolt this part together. Okay, so the thermostat goes in next. It's nice and clean. Brand new thermostat. Slide it right in. In that direction. Bleeder at the 12 o'clock top position. O-ring. Goes in right over that. And then the housing. Kind of give it a little jiggle and make sure it's in position as you're tightening it in. Now it's going to squish against that O-ring quite a bit. And that O-ring, that's what's going to give us our waterproof seal. Just make sure everything looks good. And then we're going to torque these down to 10 Newton meters with a torque wrench. 
And here's the torque wrench. Okay, so I took a couple of extra steps while I'm in here. I replaced, we've got this metal pipe in here that had a lot of rust on it. So I cleaned it up, I sprayed it with some fluid film to stop any more corrosion in the future. Uh, put a new 5 8 inch radiator hose right there. And a couple extra sections of 5 inch radi 5 8 inch radiator hose here and here. So this whole pipe here, 5 8 inch hose on both ends with new clamps because that's hard to get to that area once the car's together. So now I've got an opportunity. Went out and got a couple of pieces of radiator hose and some hose clamps. Cleaned up all the ends and refastened some hoses. So this thing should be watertight for years now, hopefully. Okay, next thing I want to put on is an idler pulley for the timing belt. It goes here. It's got a 17 millimeter bolt. No washers, just bolts right in there. I'm going to put a little, a little bit of Loctite on this one. And I don't want this thing to loosen up on me for any reason. Okay, and that gets torqued down to 45 newton meters. Okay, with Loctite on it, that should be fine. Okay, now after the idler pulley, I've got the tensioner pulley. Again, this is the pulley that's kind of offset. And we're gonna, once the belt is on, we're going to swing this thing to tensen the belt you know, like this. So, right now, we're just gonna leave it loose. Okay, now comes the critical part of putting the belt on and making sure it is in the correct position. So, I mean, the crank doesn't move very easily. I mean, you're not going to turn this crank by hand. So I'm not too concerned about the crank moving. And we're just going to have to fight with this a little bit. Now I want to have this length of the belt pretty tight because when I do tighten the belt over here I don't want this slack to loose to tighten up turning this cam. Just take your time and if it isn't right, we'll keep at it until we get it right. But I want all the slack to be on this section right here. I want these to be pretty tight.
See what I mean about the slack, taking up the slack? I just want to make sure that these cams are on a level plane and not... And I don't want the thing to be... that's obviously tipped down but when I tighten it, it gets level again. So I think that's it. Okay, so I'm ready to put some tension on this belt now. And we do that with this pulley. It's off, like I said, it's off centered. And so we want to twist this thing. And as, and as I twist it, I get more and more tension on here. And the book says, the service manual says I should tighten this. It doesn't give me a torque spec, but it says you should be able to twist the belt 90 degrees between the right side camshaft, which is this is the right side because you're always looking out of the car, right side camshaft and the water pump pulley. So I think this is like the longest stretch of belt in this whole thing. And you need to be able to twist it like that. So loosen it. I don't want to be able to do all that. So I'm going to crank it tight. Make sure it's tight everywhere. And I can twist it 90 degrees. That's <laughs> not kind of very precise spec, but that's what the book says. And so it's all very rigid. And then I need to torque this bolt down to 45 Newton meters. And so I tighten this by hand. I couldn't get both these big wrenches in there, they're too close. So I tighten this by hand with a hand allen wrench. Now I'm going to torque it to 45 newton meters. Okay, there it is. Now I will double check to see that I have the twist set. Okay, it's tight, but I can twist it. So everything's tight. The mark is on. My cams are horizontal. And let me just show you the marks. Okay, so this is the critical and important part. Now the belt is on. The camshafts are perfectly horizontal. And my mark is lined up. So we're good. If you took one of those, any, either one of those cams and you moved it over a tooth, it would be obvious. So... I'm satisfied, I'm happy, I've got this thing perfect. All right, and one last look. Took the harmonic balancer back off again. There's the belt. Everything looks good. New water pump, new thermostat in that housing. A Couple of new hoses, new clamps. I cleaned that coolant pipe and sprayed some fluid film on it to stop it from rusting any further because that's <laughs> that would be difficult and a pain to replace if it springs a leak. A couple new hoses in there with some new clamps. And we're coming down the home stretch now. It's just time to reassemble everything. And we're we're almost there. But looks good. I'm happy. OK, 
Okay, starting to reassemble things. We have this cover here. 10 millimeter bolts. And we're going to torque these down. There's no spec for these, so I'm just going to torque them so they're nice and tight. It's just a cover. It's not going anywhere. The harmonic balancer can only go in one way because it's indexed. And there it is. And here's something I want to do at this time. I want to turn this engine over by hand and just to make sure that I don't feel anything weird or nothing makes contact, I'll be able to feel it. I'm, I'm sure it won't, but I'm going to turn it over. Here's one turn of the crank. And here's two turns of the crank. It'll be one full turn for each cam. Spot on, top dead center. These things are on plane. Belt is tight. We're good. All right, now we can start putting everything back together. The next thing I want to put on is this idler pulley and this is actually where the fan goes on here. I don't have a fan on this car. Broke it off a long time ago and never, never put a new one on. It's never been a problem. And then we get two more, one through this hole and then one through that hole. Okay, the next thing are these covers. Okay, the next thing is the serpentine belt tensioner. Next is the air pump pulley. Okay, next is the serpentine belt. If I recall how this goes. Hey, how about that? Okay, I think that's all set. All in the right grooves. And good to go. Alright, it's looking good. Let's keep going. 
Okay, I'm ready to put the radiator carrier on now. In preparation to doing that, I took a little bit of grease and there's some O-rings inside each of these radiator hoses, so I kind of put a little bit of grease to help them slide onto the radiator, so that's not a will become an issue. We put these long screws again that came from taking the bumper off. Screw them in here. And then I can hang this whole carrier on these long bolts, which will give me room to get in here and hook everything up, all the electrical connectors and the radiator hoses will give me some room. I think the first thing I want to do is connect the wiring harnesses and I'm going to hook the radiator hoses up last because once they're hooked up it's going to be kind of difficult to maneuver things. Okay I'm not going to bore you with reinstalling everything that you already took apart. Um, just a quick refresher. You're going to have this bolt here, you're going to have these two bolts on the top, you're going to have these bolts here, these bolts here, there's four of them on this side, uh, again these two up top, and this one over on the side, and just, you know, jiggle it into position, I put the radiator hose on, there's the top radiator hose, There's the bottom radiator hose, uh, connectors, you know, just look around, whatever, you know, you're going to have connectors. If you lay them flat, they're going to probably kind of land right about where they go. So I'm going to now tighten a lot of this stuff up at this point. But, you know, this is all stuff that you've taken apart if you're doing this. So I don't want to bore you with putting everything back together. Okay, before I finish assembling the entire vehicle, I want to make sure that I don't have any coolant leaks anywhere or any leaks anywhere in the cooling system. So I've hooked up my airlift device and what I do with this thing is I'll draw a vacuum on the entire cooling system and then I'll see if it holds a vacuum. I know if it holds a vacuum nice and steady, I don't have any leaks anywhere. And I also use this device to fill the whole system with coolant. But let me start. I got an air hose hooked up to it, and through a Venturi, it will draw a vacuum, and then I will lock the vacuum in, and then I'll just let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes and make sure that the vacuum gauge stays solid. You know, if it won't hold the vacuum, it starts coming back down to zero. I know I got a leak somewhere, and now's the time to figure out if I've got a leak rather than when the whole entire car is assembled and the bumpers and the headlights and everything are in it. So let me uh, turn my air supply on and we'll draw a vacuum on the whole system. get somewhere in the green at least 25 if not more Alright, and now I will close this valve and now I can remove the air supply.
All right, everything looks good so far. I mean, if I had a big leak, that needle would just start coming back around very quickly. Doesn't seem to be moving, so that's good. So we'll leave that for a few minutes. And as long as it stays above 25, while it's cold and under a vacuum, I think I'm in good shape. And you can see the vacuum, you can see what it does to the radiator hose. I mean, this radiator hose is completely collapsed with the vacuum in the system. And I'm sure the lower radiator hose is going to look the same way. Yeah, look at that lower radiator hose. It's flat as a pancake. All right, and so this is good. And this way I know now I'll be satisfied if it holds a vacuum and I can put the whole car together. And when I start it and it warms up, there won't be leaking any coolant anywhere. Okay, I'm going to take this opportunity now to blow the radiator clean. Now I got good access to it. Just make sure there's no debris in there. The same with the condenser. take a brush and brush that condenser as well. Okay, next thing I'm going to put back is this condenser. Okay, so now with the vacuum applied, I'm going to use this vacuum to draw up coolant. We've got a gallon of 50-50 coolant down here. And I'm going to open this up and we're going to draw in some coolant. And this will ensure that we get coolant all throughout the engine, all throughout the block and the heater core and everything. Should be completely full. Versus just pouring it in the bottle here and, and leaving air pockets all over the place. And it should draw it in all the way down to zero vacuum. Okay, and there we go. Now we're all filled with coolant. Okay, the next thing, uh, these shrouds go back on. Okay, next thing is the bumper. Snap on the washers, the headlight washer hose. And we're closing in on the end here. We've got these two. Uh, we've got some intake ducts here. Now it's just look around. I mean, what do you got hanging around? And that's, that's what goes on next. Top engine cover. We've got power steering cover. 
power steering pump, reservoir cover, and then the top engine cover. Okay, here's the moment of truth. We're going to turn the key, see what happens. And here we are. Engine is started. No noises. Sounds good. Cams are all in time. We know the cooling system is tight without leaks because it held a vacuum for a long time. And that was a fun little job. Okay, there it is. Timing belt and water pump on my 97A4 with a V6. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you were thinking about possibly doing a job like this yourself and you were a little intimidated, maybe you found this video and gave you the confidence to try it yourself, uh, you could save yourself, you know, I mean, a job like this in a shop, probably $1,500 to $2,000. Uh, I think I spent maybe $300, $350 bucks in parts alone. So you could save yourself well over $1,000. Uh, and if that's the case and it helped you, that's great. If you like the channel, please subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching.